Hi, well, I figured it was time for another update. I know this isn't what you was expecting, but you was expecting to see me build the Easy Spin Mini. Well, I've shelved that for the simple fact that it was a little bit too small. I will do it, but I'm not just doing it now. So, I thought I'd give you an update on the original motors that I made. Now, as you can see, they're both still running, and they have done ever since turning them on in April, the beginning of April 1st, actually. Um, the one on the left, <sighs> I've noticed it's starting to slow down in the morning because there's not enough sunlight. I very much doubt that one will see it through the winter. That's going to stop. The one on the right, the red one that we zoom in upon, um, that's been excellent. It's powered all the way through. Even when I've forgotten to open the curtains, that one I do believe will make the distance. One thing to note, lid motor did tell me that uh, the plastics will degrade over time. I wasn't expecting it to degrade as quick as what it has done. As you can see, it started to go white. So, this is the reason why I haven't done the Easy Spin Mini. I've redesigned Laser Saber's Easy Spin version 2 to make my own hybrid. It's a two rotor design with bottom drive coils and top charge coils. The coil configuration for the drive coils is the standard Easy Spin motor of north, 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 and then north, south, north, south, north, south coils. The top, however, are all south pole um, magnets, and all the coils are connected in series, but they're not swapped, so everyone is the same. I'd like to point out at this stage that it's actually a failure, and the top coils don't actually produce bugger all at that speed. The most I'm looking at is about 20 millivolts. I can't even light an LED with it. But hey, it looks cool, yeah? I've done away with the sapphire bearings. They were simply too small, too expensive. What I've done this time is fitted two Neo magnets. And basically what happens is, is that the, the darted needles are tracted upright to the uh, magnets. And it gives a very, very easy spin. <laughs> if you'll pardon the pun. Uh, without the expense of the... Um, the bearings. I've modified it as you can see so that um, you can actually take the uh, the top off so you can get at the rotors. Now the rotors <coughs> um, are actually separated purely by the magnetism and the top one as you can see is free spinning and the idea for that was was that if the load got excessive on the charge coils then it wouldn't slow down the, uh, the motor coils but it turns out it just didn't work anyway so so what happens is is that the needle sits in that PTFE tube that I've stuck in the bottom where the uh, bearing would ordinarily go and that basically stops it from uh, swinging outwards so what it does it has a little bit of an eccentric turn in the middle of there it's PTFE so it's very very uh, slippy and it saves about 30, 30 quids worth of bearings. The charge coils come along and into that breadboard through that diode and then out to those wires that you've just seen. But this bugger all comes out of it, so that was a failure. Which is a shame, really. I mean, I realised that it was never going to be an over unity machine <laughs> because that doesn't exist at the moment. But I was figuring that I might get something out of it, you know, to say flash an LED yeah, 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 or something like that. I mean, at 20 millivolts, you know, it, it, it just isn't going to work. When I was building this uh, motor, I used a bench power supply and it had um, an ammeter built into it. And it reported that it was drawing less than one milliamp. So I think I'm in the macro amp range, the same as everybody else. But uh, I just couldn't uh, read any lower than that. I've got a bench uh, multi-tester, 
but for some unknown reason the Amper gauge on it doesn't work. So I guess I'm going to have to take that back to the shop and get it replaced and then I'll be able to tell you exactly what the current draw is on the motor. The, uh, the power supply that I'm using at the moment is that 5.5 volt super capacitor and it gets charged up by that 5.5 volt solar panel which goes through a blocking diode and then is connected in parallel with the battery and the um, and the motor. Well, thanks for watching. Please comment if you've got any advice on how I can improve on this design. Cheers.